So I've had a couple of people recently ask about the different sorts of LED strips out there and if it's going to work for them. So I thought I might just do a quick video about the various types and how they work and then you'll be able to decide if it's something you'll be able to master because they do require their own wiring in most cases. So we'll start off with this stuff. This is uh, just white LEDs. They can be cut every 10 centimeters where we've got a little join here. And then we've got the solder pads. So using a soldering iron, you can then make the connections to go around the corner or whatnot. So they're in a silicon tube. It's what they call IP65 rated. So it's waterproof, but it's not completely sealed with silicon. The IP68 version is, although it's a bit of a nuisance because you, then you've got to cut the silicon out when you go and join it. So that goes along. It comes on a five meter reel, usually, like one of those. And then to the end of it, it'll be bare wires. So these often don't come with power supplies, especially if they're ordered off eBay or from the various Chinese LED suppliers. So then you'll need to wire it to your own power supply. In this case, we're just running off a lab uh, power supply where we can dial in the voltage we want. And then that other number jumping around is the amperage, which is how much power we're consuming. It's going to be two... Uh, figures you're going to want to know what they are and how they work in relation to what's going on electrically. If you don't understand that it could probably end up in um, a big pile of smoke I guess. Um, 12 volt even though it's low voltage it won't kill you if you have enough of it it will definitely catch on fire melt cables and burn your house down. But if it's done properly with the correct fusing and whatnot, it should be good to go. So we'll fire that up. And we can see that's quite bright when it lights up. So I'm just holding it on the alligator clips at the moment. The actual display would be wired up and sealed so we can't touch any connections. But on the workbench, that's uh, not as big a deal. So then I've got this other stuff which come off eBay in the past. It was supposedly RGB, where we've got red, uh, green and blue. Except it turned out like that, which is okay by itself. But I really wanted RGB LEDs like this stuff. Which is essentially the same thing. Each LED has got red, uh, green and blue component. And we can see the wires and the joins here. We've got a... we can get that in focus. There's a red, green and blue circuit, as well as a common. So by switching the voltage between the red, blue and green, we can mix the colours together. So if we follow that trail, it's on its 5 metre reel. And this one comes off a little infrared remote controller where we can dial in what colour we want or put it on a random pattern. So for red, it's just um, 12 volt on the red circuit. And then if we want pink, it's going to have 12 volt on the red and the blue, and it's basic paintbrush colour mixing together. So, yeah, that goes from that. And then when it's computerised and synchronised, obviously we're not going to use this little cheap controller, which is probably about $2 from China. We'll use something more advanced, like these electronic boards, which then receive the signalling off the computer. But that's another story in itself. So then the next advancement like with these RGB ones known by us Christmas like people as dumb RGB strip because there's no electronics in it. However the next step up is the digital pixel strip which as you can see from this stuff the there's three LEDs in each little section where we can cut out and there's also a microchip. So that microchip is receiving a computer signal of a pixel controller which is then wired into our computer network from the sequencing computer. And then it can essentially command every single chip to do its own color. So there's quite a few technicalities in getting that working, but it is possible. 
So then if we fire up our computer, we should see this is the similar sort of stuff, except instead of the chip being separate, the chips are actually built into these LED ones, so you can't even see it. I don't know if we can even get that in focus. Yeah, so that looks like plain LED strip, but it's actually completely digital. So at the moment that pattern, oh there we go, we're getting individual sort of colours then. So that's receiving the signal from the control board, one wire with the computer signalling. And we've also got, from the other end, it's a little bit misleading how I've got this wired, but standard, uh, this stuff runs on 5 volt uh, DC. So essentially three wires to get it running positive, negative, as well as a data signal. But that stuff is definitely a lot more complicated to rig up. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, they also come in different waterproofing factors. Um, as I might have said before, this is IP65 rated, which is waterproof, except obviously for the connectors, they're going to need to be sealed up in silicon. Because um, yeah, rain does conduct electricity. And we got this other cheaper stuff, or like this stuff. It's supposedly, they'll claim on eBay that it's waterproof, but yeah, I wouldn't trust anything they say, particularly in specifications. Um, it might be Chinese waterproof, but it's definitely not Australian standard waterproof. So yeah, you can see this stuff's a lot thinner. Um, in the moulding, it's just like a silicon um, stuck over the top. Whereas this more expensive stuff has the actual tubing around it, which... Um, definitely should last a bit better so yeah any questions ask them in the comments